Hello guys and welcome back to Black Ops 2. Now, let's get started. Before I forget, uh, there's something that's, um, further down the line. Um, it might be the next mission, but uh, it's strike missions. And from what I remember, they're not actually that long. So there'll be a few, I'll just uh, sort this out while I'm speaking. There's going to be a few longer episodes to be honest. Uh, just why, because when I get to the strike missions, it's going to be a case of I'm going to do a strike mission as well as a story mission as well. That's just basically giving you guys a heads up. Um, right, I didn't realise this was... Um, right. Yeah, sorry. I said I'm going to keep the primary. Anyway, how it's going to be. So, let's get with Galil. Okay, let's get started. I can't figure out what Ninja is without getting inside his fucking head. Celebrates rise to power. He knows legends better than anyone. Josefina was crippled in a fire. Raul and his father started over, sold drugs for easy money. They became rich, powerful legends of Managua. The Menendez cartel was all but untouchable, so the CIA took a role to father in a US sanctioned assassination. Right, so now Menendez fucking hated America and started moving guns in Afghanistan for his own private army. The CIA got wind of it, went on the hunt for him in Cali. That was the photo Wood showed us in the vault, remember? See that handsome bastard? That's me. The only one's your father. Ask it now. The numbers and all that? Well, he was one dangerous son of a bitch. What'd you see, Woods? Sand. Sand. More fucking sand. That's its contacts on its way. You reckon we can trust the Chinese? We can't hear. They even support the Mujahideen, same as us. You know, if Russia was in Afghanistan, they'd look at China next. No one likes the Russians. You know me. I don't like anyone. Get your head down. Take it easy, Sal. Deliver the weapons. Do you want to switch over to me, Galil? There we are. Now, what are we hearing that you? I will take you to the leader of the Mujahideen. He can help you find Raul Menendez. We have fresh horses. You will follow. Okay, it's not really important, but I always seem to miss this. We're on our way to the Mujahideen camp now. What the hell are you gonna do with that? You never know. Honestly, I think it's just for a few uh, cooler killers, to be honest. I don't think it extends the reach. But saying that, like, you'd expect it to, so it might do. But I've never really noticed it. I will admit, aside from Red Dead Redemption, the horse riding in uh, Call of Duty is actually quite nice. Having to walk. Yeah, 
And speaking of Red Dead Redemption, guys, I do plan on doing a Red Dead um, series on the channel quite soon. The Russian attack is indeed imminent. You're going to need all the help you can get. I've arranged for a couple of specialists to act in an advisory capacity. Here they are now. Ramon, this is Woods and Mason, my two best men. We need weapons, not soldiers. This should be good. Okay, that speech was a bit off. Just so we're clear, we hold off the Russian attack, you give us what you have on Menendez. Our base is here. Any advance will come through one of the narrow passes leading into the valley. I know this. Our men defend these mountains. Our weapons will give them an edge. That's a bullshit plan. Talking about the Russian army here, they come at you with brute force, which means strength in numbers and heavy armor. Are your men ready for that? They have no experience with the weaponry we brought. And we do. We belong in the front line. Yalla! Yalla! What are we doing? We are taking the past merit for the war. Clips out. Let's rock it. I can't remember what's in this to be honest. Oh, mortars. I don't really use these. I'll try to. Okay, last time I played this guys, I do remember dying quite a lot, so I'll apologise in advance if there's quite a bit of editing. Just fucking barely get him. And again, fucking hell. Okay, let's make sure it's the AK to get rid of here. Fucking hell, alright. Mainly because, guys, you want to try and keep all of this. Keep them up. Fucking hell. Right, come on. Head. There we are. You'll see why I want to keep that uh, launcher uh, quite soon. There's uh, choppers and shit that you've got to try and get rid of as well. So just keeping all of that is just a bit easier, that's all. So make sure the secondary is something that you want to actually get rid of, really. Or well, you don't mind losing, should I say? Where is it? There we are. I forgot about the tanks, to be honest. Okay, I think this has... There we are. 
can't see proper. Alright. It's not the chopper that I wanted to hit, but I got two in one. There we are. Hang on. There we are. Can't remember what I need. Is that fucking... Oh, is the fucking chopper in the way? Let's try... Fuck. It's quite difficult to aim and fucking try and ride your horse at the same time. That's mainly what's difficult about this. Let's try and do a wider attack. Move, once the fuck off. Load up, load up, load up. There we are. East. This way is that, I'm assuming. I think it's this way. Yeah. I'll dismount as soon as I get to this bit. Woods? Ah, the fuck did you get it? Oh, what the fuck? Never mind. It's not Woods. Okay, there is usually a lot of guys that you need to defeat, so that's actually quite easier for some reason. Oh, you bastard. Come on. Get the bridge. It locks on quite quick, so there we are. Okay guys, you don't necessarily have to defeat, uh, like, I'm saying defeat, you don't necessarily have to take out them, but it, it, it does make it a bit easier for getting out mainly. So that's mainly like, um, if you're playing on a high difficulty, it's a good job taking out the choppers first. But obviously I'm just doing it for the fun of it. <laughs> Alright. Alright, let's get on. The old man was one tough son of a bitch. Get your ass, he was. This isn't over yet. The Russians want to give us one last display of brute force. Let's give them one last display of courage. You with me? This is going to be one of my most favourite bits in this, to be honest. Come on. I 
feel sorry for the horse. I know you don't see it, like, you get squashed, but that's not the point. I'll be honest guys, I'm surprised Woods didn't kill him straight away. This is going to be one of your decisions. I left you to rot in Vietnam, Sergeant Woods. You should have been. Nobody told me. Buddy Robin tells me you're doing business with the Nicaraguan, then Raul Hernandez. What do you do for me? Okay, I feel like after everything with Dragovich in the first one, he would be able to resist. That's why I resist in this. See, this is what I don't understand. No. No, you are and always will be a true enemy. If the Russians were working with Menendez, I don't understand the whole point of that whole battle. Without water and shelter, you may last a day. If you are strong. Unless it was just a, a big con to basically get them in that situation, I don't know. But that's always been something I don't really understand. Okay guys, I think that's the end of it, it will be. Now, that scene has always got me wondering as well, what do you guys think? Did Vesnov actually die at Barcuda? Or is he actually alive and not there somewhere? Obviously he'd be dead by the time, well actually, 
I don't know. I never really found out his age, so I don't know if he'd be dead during David's timeline. But, do you think he's alive? Or do you think he actually died? Okay, guys. Hope you've enjoyed this episode of Black Ops. I'll see you guys next time.